Hi and welcome to my vlog for the psychomotor domain and I chose the area of mathematics. I have seven videos in my collection. A couple of them are done by the same people and I wanted to start with the impossible triangle video. It tells students how to create an impossible triangle by drawing them step by step. The way I could see this in a in a classroom is to have the students view it twice and the second time through pausing so that the students can follow step by step and when they are done creating the impossible triangle they have a drawing that looks a lot like an MC Escher drawing with no beginning and no end. I think this would be a, a fun place for students to start and see if they could also create other shapes that look like there's no beginning and no end using the same types of steps as they do to create the impossible triangle. The second one and the third one are both from KidProv and KidProv.com is the website K-I-D-P-R-O-V dot com. It is a group that goes around and does assemblies at schools in different subject areas. In the two that I chose, they're both in mathematics at an elementary school. The first one is called KidProv 2.0 Fraction Action and it has students demonstrating the value of mixed numbers. And the second one is KidProv 2.0 Story Problem Live in which they have students come and illustrate a story problem with the students in the assembly trying to calculate what the final answer will be uh, before they reveal it. I think both of these things were, were great um, things to do with the assembly. I would really like to see what else they do in the assembly as well because I think it looks like it would be a lot of fun. The, principal of the elementary school commented that in the last two years that they have used KidProv as an assembly their student skills have hit mastery level at the mathematics area so that's pretty impressive because not many schools can say that. The fourth video is the cube trick and that's somebody uh, showing you how to take a 3x3 three three grid or a 7x7 seven seven grid or even a 9x9 nine nine grid and fill in the numbers so that the totals of the columns and the rows are the same amount. This is like a Sudoku. So this is like creating a Sudoku from a blank grid. And what I would see happening is once the kids learn how to create them from a blank grid to take them to a real Sudoku with its partially filled in and have them figure out what the numbers need to be in the rest of the cube. So I think that would be a really fun activity and get kids uh, on puzzles, which is always a good thinking activity as well, and um, just give them some more enjoyment out of mathematics. The fifth and the sixth videos uh, are math wraps created by students. The first one is called Show Me a Sign, S-I-N-E, and the next one is on uh, how to add and multiply and subtract polynomials. And so uh, these were created by high school students. I would see this as being okay to do with junior high students and high school students in subject area and in the topic area that they would understand. Uh, it will become very evident if they go to create a math wrap whether or not they understand the mathematical concepts behind it because if they don't, it's not going to make any sense at all. So I think it would be a really easy way to evaluate how well your students have mastered that concept. The last one is how to draw to multiply fractions and this is a video of a teacher in front of a group of students and she is demonstrating on an overhead projector how to physically draw a picture of fractions being multiplied. In her case it's one-third times one-half. She's explaining to students why you end up with a smaller fraction for the, the total amount when you do that for the product then uh, then you would otherwise because it would seem like with more numbers it should be bigger numbers and they're actually creating smaller fractions and so she she is showing that step by step she's very careful about drawing out uh, all the steps and explaining them each one by one and having the kids do it as she does it so this would be a good one to just go right in the classroom with it's already ready for you it's an easy lesson so um, I hope you enjoy these videos and I hope that you have found that there is uh, a way to have psychomotor in mathematics and not just in the, the PE areas or some that you would uh, normally consist of physical activity. Thank you and I'll talk to you next time.